What is up? My name is Matt Workin for Cinematography Database, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the one thing that cinematographers in general need to survive, and it's not food, it's not water, it's not a camera, it's none of those things. What is it? We'll talk about that in just a minute. I will say that it is advice that I was given at the beginning of my career that I feel like has helped me quite a bit when I'm trying to figure out what to do next, and it's advice that I like to pay forward to up-and-coming cinematographers when I meet them at workshops or anything like that on set that sort of thing, and I hope that by me telling it to you that it helps you in some way, and if it doesn't, I'm sorry. So let's cut right to the chase. The one thing that you need as a cinematographer to survive is really simple. You need one director to trust you and to want to work with you. Now this is deceptively simple, and again, it's something that's helped me quite a bit in my career, and I've given this exact advice with some more explanation to other cinematographers who are just starting, and some of those guys have gone on to surpass the work that I've done by quite a bit, so hopefully it does the same thing for you. So let's unpack this concept before you accuse me of clickbaiting you and giving you some crap answer. Let's start at the beginning. So as a cinematographer, so not a DP director, not a predator, but just a pure cinematographer, you are an independent contractor. Meaning you don't shoot your own projects, you're shooting projects for other people. You don't get your own jobs, you require someone else to hire you. That's a key thing that you need to understand. And the person that typically hires a cinematographer is the director. And technically it's the production company or the agency, but the director has a lot of say in who gets hired and who they want to work with. So with that bomb of knowledge in mind, let's talk about a couple tips and strategies that I've used, continue, continue to use, and I feel like I've said in other videos, that are going to help you find that one director and convince them that you're the right person to hire for the job. So the first step in finding that one director that wants to hire you is to go find the directors. Sometimes they come to you, sometimes you go to them. So you want to go where directors are. And online, that's pretty simple. That's going to be Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Try to find the online communities where there are directors and try to have conversations about filmmaking. Not necessarily sales pitch and like, look at my work. You're gonna, we're going to get to that in a little bit. But go find where the directors are on Reddit and go find where they are in real life. So you want to go to film festivals, conventions, meetup groups, uh, concerts, places that directors like to be. And most directors are not really gear nerds. Some of them are, but a lot of them don't hang out with uh, other DPs and like want to learn about gear and that kind of stuff. They're interested in a lot of other topics. And I find that music, art, movies, that type of stuff, that's where they're going to be at museums, gallery openings. That's where you're going to find directors because that's kind of where they're finding their jobs as well. So go find the directors in your local area, travel to them, find them. Step number two is kind of a corollary to step number one. So first you want to go find the directors and second, in my opinion, this is what I've done, is go find the production companies because those are the people that typically hire the directors or rep the directors. So in your local area, if they exist, which they probably should, you need to go find, I would say, 10 to 20 production companies. They can be very small and do varied work, up to really, really big places in LA and New York, like Hungry Man or dedicated production companies for commercials, movies, and television. You need to understand what companies hire directors in your area. If you can't name 10 production companies in your area that would potentially hire you, you're not doing your research and you probably don't deserve to be hired just yet. That's just my opinion, hopefully not being too mean about it, but you need to know the production companies because that's who hires you. So once you know the production companies, the goal is to get them to know you. And there's a lot of different strategies for that, but in general, find the production companies, find where their offices are, and honestly just stalk them on LinkedIn and Facebook and just try to learn more about them. And they usually do a, a good job of getting that information out there. Find out who the executive producer is, who are the producers under them, the line producers. You want to find the office assistants, the PAs, the directors, of course. You want to find out what DPs they work with, what editors, what colorists, what rental houses, what casting companies, what locations. Any production company is going to have a massive web of connections. And for you to get in there and get introduced to them, you just have to make a connection with one of those connections. And then you're in and your name will slowly start to get into the industry or specifically with that one company. So when you think about it that way, there's gonna be a lot of production companies, all of them with really big webs that intertwine in common connections. You just need to find one way into that web. And from there, you can start to build your network bigger and bigger until every production company in town knows that you shoot, that you shoot well. And then from there, the producers, the 80s in that web may start to recommend you to the directors. And that's the whole goal again, is to have a director trust you, hear about you, and wanna work with you. So number three is share your work online. 
Okay, I've said this on other videos, but it's true. You have to share your work and have people be able to access it and see it when they hear your name and want to check you out. So the first place is going to be Instagram and then Vimeo for your, your, your final work or YouTube and have a website as well. We've covered this before. So let me talk to you a tiny bit more about unpacking this for the different levels of DPs that there are because I know that there's a lot of beginners on YouTube watching this. So let's start there. Say you have nothing, you've shot no real projects, you don't even own a nice camera yet, which can be anything, which is completely fine in the beginning. You've got nothing and you wanna start. So what I would suggest doing is do a favor for someone that does own a nice camera. And that could be like an A6500, an A7S, a 5D, a Red, an Alexa, whoever, just try to help them out in some way and be like, hey, you know, I would really love to shoot something for my reel and put something together. Um, if I could ever help you out in exchange for maybe using your camera or like you coming on me, coming with me to shoot a project that I'm trying to do, that stuff does work. And I did that in the beginning because I never owned a camera for the first, like I'd say like year or two of my career, but I was able to get favors and do things to be able to get cameras as well. If you can afford to buy one, just go buy one. So you have a camera, you have a friend who has a camera, you've helped them move out or you bought them pizza or something like that. And they just want to be cool and help you out. Shoot anything. Okay, go outside on a nice day and shoot <laughs> into the sun, shoot dogs, shoot the lake, shoot the trees, shoot whatever you have in front of you. Or if you have an interest other than, you know, uh, wildlife like sports or cars or whatever you have access to, skating is where a lot of people start, shoot that and shoot it to the best of your ability, edit it together, color it to the best of your ability and put it online with non-copyrighted music or else they're gonna, they're gonna take it down. So start there and then share that on Vimeo, Put it on a Facebook group, put it on your Twitter, just share it with your friends, your family, just put it out there into the world. And don't expect a lot in the beginning, but congratulations, that is the first step to sharing your work online. Now, when you're out there shooting with it, what I suggest doing is just step back, let me grab my phone here, step back and take a picture of the camera you're shooting with, put that on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, hashtag appropriately, tag the company, and start conversations with other people that might be using that gear or interested in finding and learning more about it. That's also a really good way to get conversations started. Number four is to follow up with people and don't lose hope or faith. In my experience and from what I've heard from other people, you can meet a director, a producer, a PA, anybody, and they can be like, oh, I'd love to work with you, uh, let me keep you in mind. That can take up to a year or longer before they get the project. They have to get the project first. Again, you're not getting the project. They have to get the project. It can be a year or longer before they get a project that's right and lines up with you as far as the budget, what they think your ability level is. It doesn't matter. It can take a long time before you meet someone at a party or a networking thing or wherever or online. You connect and talk. It can be a long time before a real project turns into that, a paying one especially. So in that time, in that gap between them meeting you and them hiring you, they just need to remember that you exist and that you are still shooting or doing the thing that you say that you do. And that's where social media is so nice. Now, you should follow each other on Instagram, on Facebook, try to be friends and just follow up, DM them, email them, be like, hey, what have you been working on? Check out this thing I just did and post on Instagram that you are shooting. Post stills from the stuff that you did last, post the behind the scenes of it, just so that they remember that you still exist and that you are shooting. Now, even if you shoot a banger project, it looks amazing, you have all the cool gear and all that stuff, not that that's what filmmaking is about, but it does help. Just, that, just to remind the director that you do exist and they'll be like, hey, Next time I wanna do a project that's like that, I remember that I saw them doing that on Instagram and the last thing they shot looked really good. That can take a long time. They could want to hire you, but only get projects where you're not the right fit, right? For quite a while. But when that project comes, when that one project comes where that you are the perfect person in their mind for it, if you're staying on touch by email, social media, go out to dinner, go out to parties together, just be around the people that are creating, let them know that you exist, and when the right project comes, they are gonna remember you and they'll hire you. If they don't remember your name, if they don't remember your work and they don't see your new work, it's harder for them to remember to hire you. So my fifth and final tip to you is to be nice to everyone. And it's hard to do this because we get tired and being a freelancer is really stressful. So it's easy to be kind of like offish. And for me, I'm kind of introverted. So it's really easy to just be like quiet. But in my experience, and I think a lot of people can back me up on this, is that you don't know where the next recommendation for the job is going to come from. It can come from a PA, an intern, a producer, an AD, an editor, a colorist, a friend of a colorist. 
the colorist's wife or husband, someone who's not even in the industry. You don't know where that recommend recommendation is gonna come from, but that one recommendation will be like, oh, have you heard of this person? I was hanging out with them, they're pretty cool. Oh, did you see this person? They did this cool thing on Instagram or on YouTube, you should check it out. That one little thing that comes from someone that they trust, we're talking about a director now, if one of their friends or someone they trust recommends you into them or recommends you to them, that means a lot. Okay, so you kind of live and die by those recommendations, especially the higher up you go, where everything is basically recommendation and smaller circles. Getting into those is usually only based on recommendations, unless you do some sort of viral sensation work that everybody sees, that's one way in as well. But so much of it comes from recommendations and it can be from anyone at all levels. So the point is, be really nice to everyone. Try to be as nice to work with as possible because even if your work is great, and I really do believe this, if your work is great, but you're not that much fun to be on set with, I think that that can really work against you in today's ecosystem where we're a lot more about sharing and things are a lot more transparent about the production process. Be nice to everyone, and when you do that, you're gonna increase the chances that people will recommend you to the director that you're trying to work with. Oh, so that was my five tips. Sitting on my couch on this nice, lovely, uh, it's a Thursday, this comes out tomorrow, hope you guys Kind of enjoyed that. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing this is gonna work. The advice is a little bit generic, but I tried to keep it generic so that it can apply to more people. If you meet up with me at NAB or uh, a workshop I'm doing, something like that, and you want more specific advice tailored to your specific situation, then I'm very happy to just try to come up with some sort of strategy together with social media, with the stuff that you're working, what kind of spec jobs you should do, what kind of companies you should go after because not everybody knows the production companies. You kind of have to get hired by them to really understand what they do. Hit me up in real life and I'm happy to hash that out with you. Hitting me up on DMs and Twitter and email, I get a lot of those, so I don't typically have the time anymore, unfortunately, to give you one-on-one -on -one advice and consulting on that sort of thing. But if you see me at NAB or any workshop you come out to, I will do my best to try to tailor it for your industry, your location, and where you're at in your career. And hopefully my advice can help you a little bit more. But that's why this video is so generic and I hope that it is still helpful in some way. Go find that director, show them that you exist, show them your work, show their network of friends that you exist, show them your work, and hopefully all that comes together. You only need to trick one person into working with you, and that's the beginning. From there, everything else comes, renting nice cameras, getting crew, locations, editing, coloring, wardrobe, actors, you're just the DP. All of that comes if a director wants to hire you. All you need to work on is finding that director. So this part's gonna make the video kind of long, so if you wanna stop watching it now, I completely understand. I wanted to keep this short and bite-sized for the internet, but it's just getting kind of long. I wanted to say that Throughout my career, I've always had about one director where I've worked with them kind of exclusively, and I think that there's a lot of DPs that work this way. Now, I've, over the course of my career, worked with hundreds of directors, no doubt hundreds. I could go find you my resume, I have them all listed out. I've worked with hundreds of directors. But that being said, most of the directors I only did one job with, or two, and it's not like we didn't get along, it's just that we just didn't end up crossing paths ever again in a way that made sense. But throughout my career, from the beginning to even now, kind of, I've had one director at a time, more or less, who's taken me all the way. And I've come with them on their big jobs, their small jobs, and we just clicked really well. And so that's my, kind of my second corollary to this whole thing is, one, find a director, gain their trust, and work with them. Okay, so that's the first step. And we talked about all these tips about how to make that first connection and how to stay in touch and get that first job together. But after that, it really is my advice to try to find a director that you like working with and they like you and try to shoot with them as much as possible. Shoot their free stuff, shoot their spec stuff, shoot their paid stuff, shoot their really paid stuff. Just shoot all of it. It's not like, oh, I only come out if it's like my full day rate. You, it, you can be like that once you're in demand and you're working for so many people, but even those DPs typically have the director that kind of carries them with them. So in the beginning of my career, I've talked about, this, talked about this before, I worked with a director named Todd and Casawan and we met online on MySpace and he flew me to LA and I shot my first big music video. But it didn't end there. I shot two, three, four, five other really big music videos, especially compared to where I was in my career. He brought me with him because we got along so well. Now eventually he was in Los Angeles, I was in New York and there's a lot of DPs in LA and we kind of went our separate ways for certain projects. But we, we continue to stay in touch, we're still in touch today and he worked with me for quite a bit and it was the beginning of my music video career. From there I met a director named Paris who I believe was on Riveting Entertainment for quite a while in LA. I'm not sure if he's still on that roster or not 
go check out that production company. They do a lot of the big music videos. We met on Craigslist and I shot one really low budget Busta Rhymes video for him and we got along really well. And then I shot, I don't know, like a hundred music videos with him for Def Jam, for Diddy, for G-Unit, for uh, what's... What's Jules Santana's label? I forget. It's been a while, but we shot all those music videos and I shot so many of them. And then there was another director that I worked with named EJ, who, when I first met him, was on DVXUser.com in the job section for a free DVX user job. So I was doing all those jobs because I was just trying to meet everyone. Like I tried to tell you in the five points here, meet people, make the seeds, and try to get that connection with one director well, who can, will continue to work with you. So again, in the beginning, I used MySpace. That worked. Craigslist worked. DVXUser.com worked. EJ went on to become a staff commercial director at MTV, and I came with him, and I shot hundreds of commercials with EJ. From there, I've worked with a bunch of other directors, and um, it's kind of changed depending on where the director's career goes and kind of the stuff that I want to work on. But there's usually been one or two directors at a time for about a year, sometimes longer, where I shoot almost every, every single thing they do. I'm talking about spec projects, like I said, paid projects, just shoot everything. And that's one of the main reasons that owning a camera is great, because they're like, oh, I really want to go shoot this like mini doc about this person. You know, there's no budget, but it would be really fun to do. Do you have a camera? Can you come shoot that with me? Even though they will also hire you for uh, paid jobs where you rent expensive equipment, it is nice to have a camera that looks pretty decent when you want to go do those jobs together. So that's kind of the second part to this whole thing. Uh, you're going to want to find that one director, and we talked about finding that director, but when you find them, you want to shoot everything they do. And as they get better, they hopefully bring you with them as much as possible. If they jump up into like huge union level commercials, you're not 600, you're not coming with most likely. But in some cases, it's more of a slow grind up, and you just kind of slow grind up together. So that is going to wrap it up for this video. I feel like it was a little long. I wanted to make it shorter, but it turns out to be this length. I hope that's helpful for you in some way. If you like the video and you're feeling inspired, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I haven't done a career advice video in a while. I, used, I did like, there was a couple months where I did like a lot of them. That's like all I was concentrating on, but I haven't done for one for a while. People were asking me these kind of questions and I get them a lot. So I thought I would put them into this video. We're also going to be doing breakdowns and reviews and all sorts of other sort of cinematography related stuff for, for the people that are interested in doing it for a career. And you're kind of in the beginning and you're trying to figure out what's important. Do I need to buy a camera? Do I need to learn the gear? Do I need to learn the lights? You do. But if you sleep on the director part and the networking part, it doesn't matter how good you are if no one knows you exist and no one knows your work and no one trusts you and you haven't done anything in the actual industry. You need to get into that part. It's kind of a painfully social awkward thing, especially in my case, um, but I was able to do it and I hope that this advice helps you do it in some way as well. I will see you guys on the next episode. You get out there and plan better, shoot better. Bye.